because uh, starting up something doesn't mean you know you just have to go with the flow and pick up something and become an entrepreneur you should be solving something there should be a problem that you should be targeting and then solving that problem so that's what you know an entrepreneur is even if you are in web3 space what challenges are there in web3 space Hi, welcome to the Mutual Knowledge Podcast. I'm here with Shivani Sharma, CEO and founder of Kaylee Technologies and Secure Web Re. Welcome, Shivani. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe, for having me. You're very welcome. So um, I know that you had been in the bug bounty space as an entrepreneur for a while. And I guess, you know, first of all, actually, if you want to explain your entry into bug bounty in general, because yeah. I've heard this story before when we've spoken yeah. in the past, and it's very inspiring. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, like, for all the first time listeners, um, I have been into, like, you know, traditional uh, cybersecurity space when I started with my uh, company, Kaylee Technologies, and we were into the services domain where we used to do VAPD services for the clients. And, you know, that uh, during those times, sometimes we feel like, you know, a budget becomes a lot of uh, uh, issue while, you know, doing such activities. And we often used to get, certain kind of pushback okay we can do it at a later step you know and uh, and that's that's actually with everybody around who are into this space because as you know security becomes uh, you know a last stage where you know people want to put their money in so this is this was a general trend that we were looking at and you know uh in order to cater that uh, issue we wanted to make security uh, really affordable, available, and accessible to everybody. So that was something that we wa we were wanting to aim at. And uh, there are a lot of bug bounty platform already available in the market. And uh, let's say there's no competition, like, you know, you can match up to bigger uh, players in this space. But in order to cater to the small size businesses, uh, or maybe, you know, the sole proprietorships, who those who are just starting up, or small companies with, you know, minimum of four to five people, you know, who want to have security because that is very important. So we wanted to cater that segment. And that's how, you know, we come up with our bug bounty platform. And, you know, as it is like a startup boom everywhere and, you know, companies coming up in Web2 space, company coming up in Web3 space, we want it to be a very holistic platform because, you know, innovation is the key. If you, if you need to, if you need to cater, you need to have variety. You need to cater to the public who, who you know, want to have uh, their uh, subjects into that place, you know, and that's where uh, we started with our own bug bounty platform. So where, you know, we do not charge any platform fee and companies are free to come in, launch their program, and, you know, they are the master of their own game. So they can customize it. They can have it uh, as per they want. Even they can give out swags if they don't want to give out money. So it, it has to be, you know, uh, sometimes accessible to the people who really want it. And, you know, creating also a pool of uh, researchers around, which will give uh, a kind of a holistic community feel as well. So, uh, and, uh, you know, when we are starting up in the cybersecurity space and uh, young blood is coming in and, the, you know, the beginners, they really need that kind of a recognition and it is helpful for them as well. They get access to, you know, a community in which they can also um, uh, gain knowledge, increase their knowledge as well and have that relationship. So it's a win-win situation for both organizations as well and for the researchers as well. And, you know, with the so much of... Uh, demand of the web three projects that is growing into the uh, security space uh, companies and projects that are op operating in web three they need to have uh, they need to make sure that uh, it they have integrity into the platform and also the confidentiality so these two things are maintained equally 
and entering into the space was you know um, it, I, i would say a strategic move at that time because uh, everybody is uh, talking about web3 and they are scalable as well uh, not to speak about now, now um, normal companies also going into web3 spaces create financial companies creating d apps so this space has lot of potential and it will keep growing because of the nature that you know they are decentralized so i would say my motivation was to cater to smaller businesses bring out innovation and also uh, you know explain to people that it is not always necessary to put you know hundreds and thousands of dollars into security you can always start with you know less and less is more sometimes once you get like you know i can i can afford it and it is accessible to me and then you know the path is endless well said well said and when you talk about community that actually really resonates with a lot of you know the entrepreneurs in the web3 space as well they're very yeah. community oriented they're very into you know financial inclusion in general um openness and open source and right. that's part of what i love about the parallel between the infosec community the information security community and the web3 mm-hmm. systems as well um do you see that parallel as well uh he, like yes so there are a lot of similarities if you say between the web 2 and the web 3 space as well because uh collaboration is one point you know just like you know we do a collaboration in web 2 space you know between the researchers and the companies it is essential in web 3 space as well because company rely on the expertise of the researchers and you know they need to identify and resolve those issues as well so i think that is one common point that is uh, their collaboration and uh, i would say like even the disclosure programs or maybe the kind of reporting so researchers are still uh, you know expected to follow some uh, responsible uh, vulnerability disclosure practices uh, which will involve like you know reporting of vulnerabilities uh to the affected parties before making them public because sometimes companies do not want to make them public as well they want to keep it internal so i think uh, these are few similarities uh, that i see and uh, in terms of web 2 and web 3 i would say only differences between the technology uh, part where web 3 is like a uh, decentralized which can lead to differences in you know how the vulnerabilities are addressed and uh, there may not be a centralized entity to coordinate and manage the disclosure so that that's something that i think differs in that uh, part and uh, also maybe the attack vector if i must say like attack vectors are also a key difference where you know web3 can be very complex sometimes because if you have to order a smart contract it requires a different kind of expertise and you know they are not very well prevalent in web2 space as well so the researchers who are in the web3 space they need to adapt to these challenges and you know uh, i also often see a shift like you know um, researchers in the web2 space they want to scale up they want to come up into the web3 space learn about what is decentralization learn about blockchain learn about blockchain security and uh, they want to know how the applications are built on it so there are so many so many blockchains that are coming up and you know every blockchain have their own complexities so th- that that is something also you know to be taken care of and mostly if i say in web3 space people generally talk about uh, blockchain and smart contract security to gain expertise in this but it is too much more than that the market is also like you know volatile with of all all the cryptocurrency tokens coming in and security becomes all the way more important at that point of time so uh to to like sum up it it really you know this adds like a extra layer of complexity to the whole uh, process as compared to the you know traditional web2 spaces that you know we have like flat based bug bounty programs in web2 spaces so mm-hmm. and that is where i see well some right. similarities and differences and like you know due to that complex at least i have not seen you know a real comprehensive guide i mean i've seen mm-hmm. 
studies about specific types of attacks that are specific to blockchain, for example, re entry right. attacks. Um, but there's not necessarily like as much of a comprehensive guide, such as, yeah. you know, the OWASP top 10 proactive mm -hmm. controls on the defensive side. Um, it's not yeah. necessarily, or like, you know, a checklist like um, the ASVS application security verification standards or, right. um, th these are all, all, all things, you know, um, if you're not familiar, uh, you know, um, viewers can look this up, but absolutely, um, it says something about where the state of blockchain still is it's been <laughs> going on for, for years, but yes. as far as the research, it's still very new. Mm -hmm. It is, and you know, research is new, even there are like projects also uh, that, you know, I remember when I was uh, getting into the secure Web3 space, you know, talking about security of Web3 only, uh, I, I saw, I came across uh, certain projects like decentralized application security project, uh, uh, maybe we can call it DASP, <laughs> top 10. Uh, so it was uh, back in 2018 that they came up with, you know, certain kind of pointers, like, you know, which we can take care of uh, certain kind of issues that well, Web3 can resonate with, you know, as compared to OWASP. It's not very publicly, um, you know, uh, acceptable or available because it is just like a project and it is on, you know, on GitHub where people can just go review it. It's between a very close-knit security community. And it, it, it talks about issues of, uh, uh, I can't remember all, maybe, you know, denial of services, uh, time manipulation, access control, such kind of issues they talk about. So I, I think they are trying to uh, make some guidelines and make some controls around it, but it's not yet very public and publicly acceptable or available. Uh, it's a close-knit, uh, you know, topic which is still under, uh, what do we say, still under preparation or still under review or it's being worked up on. Uh, the scope is very large and, you know, uh, such kind of projects which are like open source and collaborative, they require efforts from everybody because uh, in discovering smart contract vulnerabilities, uh, it, it's a huge task. Right. Well said. So, um, yeah, congratulations for taking on that challenge. That's absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so, and you know, companies and, and researchers must be super grateful for this opportunity that, that you're providing for yeah. them. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, not uh, not talking about like, you know, rewards and recognition. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, pen testing, smart contract only, you know, the community, the cybersecurity community have to be very strong. Because I, I would say like uh, the way we do pen test of normal web application, it's very different uh, from how we do it. And uh, protecting application on certain uh, blockchain, uh, it's it's like uh, another ball game altogether. So how, how uh, you know, as the bug bounty creators, mm -hmm. um, so how, uh, what, what is the scoping like? Is it mm -hmm. just not clear or is it just different? Is, is there a standard on how, on how to scope it? So, uh, you know, uh, if I have to say how I have seen sometimes, you know, uh, the scope of Web3, it usually involves like identifying and, you know, um, like they give you a smart contract uh, uh, link. And in that uh, smart contract link, there would be like different branches that you know will be there and it has to be pen tested in an environment you have to set up your own lab uh, of web3 there are a lot of uh, open source uh, tools also available for for such kind of challenges you know mostly we see smart contracts uh, as the scope given by the uh, companies which i have personally seen so researchers may examine the mechanism the nodes the functionalities and they can come up uh, with the vulnerabilities on them. And uh, there are like decentralized applications also. And uh, 
in those decentralized application the usually uh, if i have, i will not go into much technical details but you know there can be vulnerabilities related to any transactions or user data or integrity or the interaction of the start smart contract audit if it has been compromised or not so i have seen these kind of scopings till now because these are these are the most commonly uh, seen scopes in web3 and very interesting uh, so i guess in closing if there's one piece of advice that you mm -hmm. give regarding security to a web3 entrepreneur what it, what would it be so uh, i would say like you know when when i started my entrepreneurial journey sometimes you know uh, it's very lonely at first because you know everything you have to deal with on your own it's uh, it's 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 not something then that, that you know that will come to you you have to go to the problem understand it fix it solve it and then you know get on to a solution so i would say um, even getting into web3 you have to need me you have to make sure that what is the challenge that you want to solve that is number one thing because uh, starting up something doesn't mean you know you just have to go with the flow and pick up something and become an entrepreneur you should be solving something there should be a problem that you should be targeting and then solving that problem so that's what you know an entrepreneur is even if you are in web3 space what challenges are there in web3 space if you pick up one challenge one problem and work towards that problem and you're trying to simplify it for everybody i think that would be the game changer because a lot of companies are in this space we are not inventing something new we just have to redefine what is already there i think that would be the last piece of advice that i can give that's really well said extremely well said and i think that will help many listeners and <laughs> um so yeah, yeah. great yeah uh, because uh, uh, it, it's not about you know web3 or web2 uh, if i talk about general entrepreneurship also and if you are trying to get into it you need to solve a problem one thing at a time well said well said yeah going from the pain points and solving them yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah very well said you are such an inspiration and um thank you wonderful to have you and um yeah great thank you so thank much. you thank you Zoe for having me of course